Hey there and welcome to Scratch Building and Eye of the Deep. This is a classic 2nd uh, edition AD&D uh, Beholder Kin monster. And uh, I was looking at him and I was thinking about maybe uh, buying one and then I discovered there wasn't really any ones out there that I really liked. And I half thought about converting a Beholder but then I thought if I buy a Beholder I'd rather just paint the Beholder. Um, so I thought, what the hey, I'll just well scratch build, I haven't done any scratch building for a while. So I just will go back to it, so I'm going to be using green stuff to make this. And uh, first of all, as ever, do a drawing. So this is my drawing of an eye of the deep. Uh, much like a beholder, it has a sort of orb-like head-shaped body with a, a big toothy maw in the front. A single large eye centrally, which does have a special power. I think it's a stun ray in the case of an eye of the deep rather than uh, the anti-magic ray which is what the holders have. Also unlike the anti-magic ray of the beholder which is just functional all the time the eye of the deep's eye is an active power which you have to utilize. Uh, then the two other eyes which do give it the same kind of all-round seeing ability that the beholder has. Uh, I think one does hold person and the other does hold monster. And then of course of, as well it has the two crabby claw arms and these things roam around at the bottom of the sea being pests just like their beholder kin um, they're not as intelligent as beholders but uh, you know everybody has their downfalls so first of all in order to turn this into a green stuff I have had to make a wire frame armature and just so you can see that you could do it just as armature but I've actually um, made a full sort of a wire model if you like and there it is next to the picture and I'll give you some close-ups in just a second so you can see it a bit more clearly there you go there's a close-up of the armature and you can see I've got stuff starting to be formed so you've got the eye cavity formed here out of the wire I call it an armature really it's a wireframe model um, I say wireframe not like a computer wireframe but as in I've coiled wire in such a way that it forms a lot of the structure. Yeah, you've got the mouth here, so this is just the bottom of the jaw. Well, the two arms down at the bottom here, where I've made them thicker than the um, eye stalks on top. Um, and it's just because I, I want the arms to be a bit meatier than the eye stalks, just for proportions. And as you can see, it's sort of it's already fully formed. Um, this bit at the back here, uh, this is not a tail or anything. This is just I left wire trailing out partly to give me something to grip at a later date and also to give me something to mount it from haven't quite decided how to mount it but um, I've been thinking maybe I'll do it on the base which is like completely covered in seaweed so you can't actually see these tails coming out and they can disappear into the seaweed and they can just sort of be floating just above the seaweed uh, but again I haven't quite decided all of this and I'm going to see what I do when it happens really uh, so next step Oh, actually, before I go into the next step. So here goes it from the back as well. Uh, you can see it just sort of looks like a bit of a knotted ball, really. And partly um, I'm doing this because uh, it's like... You could do this just with a bead, right? So you could just take a circular bead and then you could sculpt onto it with um, Milliput or I'm going to be using green stuff. But um, for my purposes, I've thought what I'd do is I'd make this sort of wire frame and I've literally I've just sat down and coiled the wire and sort of worked it out just made it up as I gone along just coiled it and knotted it and coiled it and knotted it and formed these shapes and then sort of fed it back in on itself and fed it out it's actually made of two pieces of wire hence you have the um, I mean you could make it out of one piece but uh, actually when the wire gets a certain length it becomes awkward to coil and knot in this way so the next step then is to cover this in green stuff and sort of form the initial structure when doing this phase part of it will be like um, I'll put the big central eye in as a piece and I'll start giving the form so always try and lay up so if you have sort of things like eyes put them in first so that when you're putting additional layers over the top it naturally falls over the top of it so you start forming eyelids without even kind of trying and layering things up in the right sequence like this when you're making something is kind of important because it makes the build pretty easy. So I'm going to crack on, I'm going to get the first layers of green stuff done and 
then I will be back in a second. Just in case you didn't know, this is green stuff. It's a two part epoxy resin. It's called green stuff because the blue and the yellow stripes mix together and make it green. Uh, it's commonly used in um, sculpting of miniatures on a, in sort of a, by companies that do traditional sculpted miniature casting rather than the sort of modern um, 3D modelled then 3D printed for a master kind of sculpting which is the sort of modern industry standard as far as I'm aware if you look at the sort of top end industry people like I don't know like Games Workshop um, Fancy Flight Games um, I think Corvus Belly these days do it as well um, and I think ultimately you do get a higher quality sculpt from those models because you can scale them better you can uh, cram a lot more details into them and your human error as such is kind of removed from the equation so when you do it again this you literally you just get it you, you cut off a section and then you, you take this and just you mush it together until it forms it turns green and is evenly evenly green and this can take 10-15 minutes uh, it dries pretty quickly um, well it kind of sets to a state where you don't want to be playing with it anymore in about probably half an hour but it takes a few hours to actually cement properly so that when you touch it it doesn't get marked also when you're doing this um, you need a set of tools which are like dentist tools and I do have a set just going about which I'll be using in this sculpting process and I'll show you them at a later point but in the meantime I'm just going to get this mixed and the first layer put on I'll just put on very thin uh, cover the frame and that will give me the, the sort of the core structure as such for the mini so Kachu and a Mo here you have it then here's the initial um, sculpt no oh, it's not really a sculpt it's um sculpting is normally removing by the way uh, so if this is a sculpture it is something that's had stuff removed from it so a block of stone which has stone removed that is a sculpture whereas a model is where you add stuff on so this is a model really because I'm using a modeling process where I'm adding green stuff onto the surface um, at some point there might be some sculpting involved, um, we shall see though, uh, but this is just literally get the green stuff on, um, form most of it, uh, you can see that I've smoothed out the eye, the big central eye, so that will be the eye, um, but as I add layers on of the epoxy then um, I'll sort of part cover that to create eyelids. Um, and I will fold the eyelids back over the scales, maybe sculpt that, there'll be a little bit of sculpting involved. And just if you aren't aware, if you ever do use green stuff, um, a lubricant in terms of stopping your tools from sticking to it is um, water or saliva. I actually find saliva better because it's more viscous um, and I don't really mind sticking my tools in my mouth. But I can't recommend doing this because it's epoxy. Don't put epoxy in your mouth, not very clever, highly toxic. You might notice that the jaw is being left with the bottom open so you can see straight through the bottom of the jaw and there's the odd bit of wire that you can still see but I'm not really fussed about that. When the epoxy sets it will go rigid and that will give me the actual work surface. Um, the googly eyes um, that make it look, well, almost cute? Almost? Do we think it looks almost cute? Maybe. That's up to you. Um, They've also been smoothed out so that again I can do the sort of eyelid effector over the top of them and build up over the top. I don't want anything to get too much chunkier than this, um, but there'll probably be a little bit of extra chunkiness as I work in more layers of uh, the green stuff. Uh, this left score, left score, left claw, left claw is trying to droop a bit. Um, and I'll fiddle with that a little bit whilst it's drying and trying. I'll probably even get something and try and prop it up a little bit so I find something which is the right height for the tip of the claw, put it underneath the tip of the claw and that'll prop it up. Um, and the claws at the moment they're just literally a very rough shaping of the green stuff um, just in order to give the sort of under layer as such from which I can build the claws off, off properly. Um, I am using a sort of layer by layer process so I'm trying and everything at the moment apart from things I've smoothed out on purpose it's got my fingerprints all over it 
which I'm sure anybody that is a real sculptor out there will be going like, why would you do that? Um, but I'm not a real sculptor, so it's fine. And the reason I actually don't mind doing that at the moment, and I've only smoothed out the eyes, is because my fingerprints will actually give a bit more grip to any green stuff that I put over the top. So I'm going to have to leave this now, uh, leave it overnight to dry. Um, there are methods of doing this um, where I've seen people talk about making green stuff ovens where you get like a coffee tin, a metal coffee tin, and you get like a, an angle, a standard lamp basically, or not a standard lamp, it would have to be an angle poise. Um, and you actually cut the... You, I mean, I think I've seen them where people actually have holes in them so you can just put them in and take them out. But you then put the lamp light right down over the top of the um, coffee tin and it's just enough heat to set the epoxy very quickly so you can set it in like 20 minutes I think they said to full set but I'm just going to leave this overnight and I will crack on with it uh, the next day so this is going to be a bit of a long very long winded for me and very rapid for you kind of a video uh, so just so you do know though if you are ever thinking about doing this yeah you can sit down and make the wireframe you can then sort of layer up um, green stuff in the kind of way I'm doing or milliput or whatever takes your fancy I like green stuff because uh, it has an elasticity to it whereas milliput behaves more like clay where it kind of tends to tear um, but uh, different people say different things for different reasons I've never used brown stuff either and apparently brown stuff is really great for certain things as well but again I'm not really enough of a sculptor to be able to inform you about that so yeah, I'm going to leave this to dry overnight and I will be next phasing this tomorrow. So, I hope this has been of some use to you and you found it interesting and that you're making awesome models and that this is somehow helping you to make awesome models. Next part coming very, very soon. Cheers everybody, have a good one and take care. Bye bye